The United Nations sounded a desperate alarm today. The prolonged drought in East Africa has reached new proportions, and millions of lives are hanging in the balance. Can a massive famine be averted? The CBC's David McGuffin reports. Water holes that should be full are nearly bone dry. Livestock are dying. This is the story right across East Africa. Following the failure of the long rains, millions of people in Kenya, Ethiopia, Sudan, Somalia, and Djibouti can now not feed themselves. Here in northeast Kenya, the situation is described as the worst in 15 years. The animals are dying because they have taken away the most food. There's not enough for grass, so they are almost getting finished. In Kenya, over 20% of children are now acutely malnourished. The UN is warning that the 19 million people in the region who are on the brink of starvation is just the beginning. That number is going up uh, as we are not expecting any rains to come until October. If those rains don't materialize or are less than we would uh, normally expect, the situation will get uh, catastrophic. As bad as conditions that produced the deadly Ethiopian famine of 1984. A million people died. The failure of the long rains follows several seasons of bad harvests. Food prices have skyrocketed. Only 32% of the population of the district is receiving food. The UN is appealing for $230 million. They say is needed to feed 4 million people in Kenya alone over the next six months. But in face of the global economic crisis, it's received only a fraction of that amount from wealthy nations. The fear here is that as with the Ethiopian famine in 1984, it will take scenes of people starving to death to get the world to finally act. David McGuffin, CBC News, Nairobi. Even with millions on the brink of starvation, East Africa is just the tip of the iceberg. Worldwide, the number of people lacking adequate food now exceeds one billion. When the UN reported that milestone in June, the CBC's Brian Stewart tracked down why hunger is reaching new heights. The world has never seen so many hungry people before on this planet. A largely quiet crisis overlooked amid global recession. International agencies, however, are shaken by a record 12% increase in world hunger this year across Asia, Africa, and Latin America. For the first time, more than a billion people don't have enough to eat most of them children. They didn't have enough last year. Now they'll get even less. What happened a year ago is that the price of food doubled virtually overnight. And I will just use an example from our school feeding program. This is a cup from Rwanda. It's an actual cup that we use to feed 20 million kids around the world. And virtually overnight we lost half that food for the same contribution. Josette Sharon heads the World Food Program, the leading frontline agency trying to hold back the new wave of hunger. But the numbers keep rising. Today, 89% of the countries in Africa, the food is more expensive even than a year ago. So while global prices have come down on big markets, in local markets in Africa and elsewhere, people can today afford about two-thirds less food than they could two years ago. This has caused the numbers of hungry in the world to expand exponentially, and this year, according to the Food and Agriculture Organization, we will pass the billion mark. One out of every six people will go to bed hungry, unsure if they can fill this cup. The problem is not lack of food in the world. Actually, the planet produces almost 20% more per capita than 30 years ago, enough theoretically to feed rising populations. The poorest, however, simply don't have the means to buy enough food as speculation and hoarding drives up prices. Small farmers also lack virtually everything needed to produce their own food. Land, fuel, fertilizer, irrigation, cash, and transport. And still, most can't leave their impoverished plots. These people have no place to go. There's no industry, there's no services sector in which they could be employed. 
at last, as noted by the... Olivier de Schutter is the UN Special Rapporteur on the right to food. He worries governments have used up all their bailout money, leaving nothing for agriculture. When we see the sums mobilized to save the financial system, we know that the, you know, 30 billion uh, US dollars per year, which are estimated uh, to be needed to relaunch uh, viable agricultural systems in sub-Saharan Africa, for example, this money can be found and mobilized. Only a small portion of Western agricultural pledges have been paid to Africa. A hesitation due in part to increasing disillusionment over corrupt and inefficient governance in the sub-Sahara. On the eve of his trip to Africa, President Barack Obama said the time for African excuses is over. African leaders have to take responsibility and be held accountable for chronic failures. I'm not a believer in excuses. I think that it's very important for uh, African leadership to take responsibility and be held accountable. Uh, and I think the people of Africa understand that. New voices in Africa demand the same higher standard. You know, I find myself in a very difficult situation because I do want Kenyans to be assisted. But what can you do about a government that cannot fight corruption within itself. What can you do about people who are in charge, who are willing to do business with the food while their own people are starving? One Gary Matai of Kenya is an activist, the first African woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize. She wants help from the developed world, but she's also strongly critical of African governments. One of the tragedies in this country is that because of our tribal focus, it's quite possible for us as leaders to watch as one community starves, because that's not my community. My community has a lot of maize. It's not starving. It's that community that's starving. And so I go back. Good governance. Africa has a lot of friends. But Africa will not be assisted until she learns to govern herself in a responsible way. Only two years ago, food riots and violence erupted in 30 nations. New instability is now feared, along with mass migrations if food runs out, like Ethiopia in 1984. If countries or people do not have food security, there's only three options. People revolt, they migrate, or they die. And neither of the three options is really um, one that contributes to peace and stability. So making sure that we know what we're doing and have a coherent global leadership approach is critical. It's estimated five million children will die this year from the effects of malnutrition. And yet food aid has declined 30% over a decade. But no one yet knows how severe a life and death crisis the hungry will face if prices soar further. Brian Stewart, CBC News.